Let's take a look at some charts on ZRX from this week's article on Brave New Coin. So ZRX is an ERC-20 token designed to power various forms of DEX to centralize the exchanges. And that has sort of morphed over the past few years in a good way. And the bottom line to all of this is, is a token really necessary? And if you're asking that question to yourself, the answer is usually no. So it's very easy to be bullish on the protocol, the liquidity aggregation, stuff like Matcha, where ZRX has be- uh, morphed into, where it's what it's become is incredibly bullish. It doesn't look like that necessarily is going to translate into the token value itself. Um, this is one example of the ZRX UI. I'll show Matcha in a second, but that's a liquidity aggregation service for pretty much anything in the DeFi ecosystem. And if you look at what they've done over the past few years... They basically made it to where all the exchanges talk to each other. You have access to all the exchanges through APIs. Gone are the days where you need a login for a specific exchange, or you need to have login information for all the exchanges. You don't even need KYC AML because you can just trade out of your wallet, uh, your browser wallet or any one of the various wallet options on something like Matcha. Your Coinbase account, all that stuff. Makes it very easy to trade everything. Here's how their uh, liquidity aggregation works. And it's all seamless in the background. It's exactly what everything needs to be. You don't know it's there when you're using it. It just happens. Here's what Matcha looks like. You can choose your token. You can type in a token you want to buy. You can do all this stuff. It's completely seamless. So the whole UI setup of something like Matcha, the exchanges for ZRX, it's incredibly bullish. I'll show the volume numbers in a second, but those are... Almost in, in 6 billion for the last quarter. So just massive volume here for a DEX or a DEX service liquidity aggregation. Not only is it being built and is robust and looks good, but people are actually using it. So it's not an empty cathedral. It's definitely being used in a big way. Here's the token. Now the token has staking in a sense that you can stake your ZRX and get paid out in ETH, which is probably the best case than getting paid out in ZRX because the ETH for the staking gets paid out through fees on the exchanges or through the API, however you want to think about that. Overall, very little total amount notional is being staked compared to the actual networks that use cons- that use staking for their consensus mechanism. And if we compare ZRX in the blue here to uh, everything else, it's not really fair because, again, they don't use staking as a consensus mechanism. But it's always good to check. Check out your neighbors. Keeping up with the Joneses here. What's going on? Basically, they only show up on this chart on uh, GitHub commits. So there's there's a lot of development surrounding ZRX protocol activity, governance. All that stuff looks really good. It's just hard to be bullish on the token itself based on the fundamentals. Here are the volume numbers. And you can see it's gone from next to nothing until mid last year when... The DeFi stuff really picked up, and now it is almost five billion this month already. I mean, these numbers are crazy for a Dex or a Dex service. Number of trades extremely high as well. Average trade size is extremely high. So this isn't some small service that can only handle small orders. It can handle extremely large orders frequently. Number of traders rising. So everything is up and to the right. I love everything about the protocol. The token, on the other hand, again, it's just hard to be bullish of the token. Here's some on-chain metrics, transaction count, and average transaction sizes for the token. And you can see the transaction counts in general haven't surpassed anything since inception. You know, they're just sort of ranging from zero to a base peak level, aside from a few times. I mean, transaction sizes are up, but that's probably because ETH fees are way up. In general, fees go way up transactions go down and mean transaction sizes go up so despite the eth fee rising eth fees rising we're still seeing um, a rise in transaction counts for the token but still it's nothing you know it's like who cares right it's just ranging for the past three years at this point here are active addresses and nvt inverse metric of economic utility nvt was near the bottom of the historic range around 50, now it's around 100 in sort of the middle of the historic range. I don't think it's too useful in general. I don't think they're robust. The uh, on-chain use of the token is robust enough to even rely on 
it's something like NVT. Active addresses have mainly remained below 1500. This is ICO distribution. Still, active addresses are rising. It's just, there's nothing quite bullish about any of this. It's just sort of ranging again over the past three years. Let's take a look at some of the technicals for the token. 5200 EMA, VPVR, yearly pivots, volume, and RSI. So this is the daily Binance chart. And for the most part, the token price since 2019 had ranged below 33 cents. You know, that was really... VPVR tells this whole story in that 21 to 33 cents is where most of the token lived as far as the volume is concerned. It appears since mid last year and early this year that has now become the floor, 33 cents. And the trend does look bullish in that the 15 to 200 is crossed bullishly. The prices above the yearly pivot, the next yearly pivot up is around 80 to 90 cents. So I don't really know what it's going to take to get this token moving. It's done rather well for itself since January 2020, since early 2020. It hasn't really outperformed anything. So it's hard It's hard to be a buy and hold here, even though the trend looks good. Even though it looks like 80 to 90 cents looks to be a good target in the near term. The fundamentals of the token existence are just difficult to want to hold this. Although arguably you could calculate how much the risk reward would be if you're holding and staking, getting those ETH fees, you know, then maybe it's worth it, right? Maybe there's some hidden alpha here where someone is staking a massive amount of ZRX, eating that um, lack of price action to the upside and collecting fees. The fees aren't insane. It's like 33 ETH right now, every so often. And that's variable to based on trading volumes. So there's a lot of variables there. Uh, there's a bit of a bear diff here. Low time frame, higher highs in price, lower highs in RSI. Here's the daily cloud, which actually looks pretty good. It's basically busting out above the cloud for the first time since mid last year. It was working on this gnarly looking head and shoulders with a neckline of around 41 cents. So again, based on the 5200 cross, based on the cloud in a vacuum, this is a buy and hold long trade. ZRX BTC, on the other hand, looks very bearish below the 200, below the cloud. It's got several very large volume resistance nodes on the way up at 2500 sats, 3800 sats, lots of previous volume ranging on the way up. So it's almost uninteresting until it's above 3000 sats at a minimum until it's above the daily cloud, above that 200. There was a bit of a bull div here on RSI and price, just because price made a lower low, RSI did not. That may have a reset at this point. So I don't know how much more this has in it, but it really is un uninteresting to me until it's above 2,700 sats at a minimum. So overall, the pro protocol works great. It's becoming a mainstay in DeFi. It is giving centralized exchanges a run for their money very quickly here. The token itself probably doesn't need a value. I don't know, that's so hard and obviously subjective, but it's hard to see a reason why it exists in the moment. Because if you have a governance issue, you're just going to fork, which is what many protocols have done already. So that's a tough one. The on-chain stats themselves don't look bearish, but they don't look incredibly bullish either. Uh, technicals for the USD pair look pretty good for a buy and hold in a vacuum and technicals for the BTC pair look bearish to neutral at best and are really uninteresting until they're above 2,500 to 3,000 sats.